Andrew Feinstein, everyone knows that you're from South Africa, you're an anti-apartheid activist, you're a Jewish Corbyn supporter, but what is lesser known is that Keir Starm is your MP and you've come across him. What is he like personally? My overwhelming sense of him is, first of all, he has always been a very divisive figure within the constituency from when he became the MP. He has definitely um, had at best an apathy, at worst a loathing of the left members of the constituency. Personally, my sense of him is as a man lacking in any basic political principles or values, a man whose primary, possibly exclusive political interest is in becoming Prime Minister. And he seems to have very little commitment to specific policies, to a particular world view. I also find him very inauthentic, which is just a personal view, and severely lacking in charisma. Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner have portrayed themselves recently as like the heroes of the Jewish community. You know, they really care about British Jews. Yeah, I've seen people within the Labour Party, supporters of Keir Starmer, use the term self-hating Jew. Do you think that shows that maybe they're not as friendly to Jewish people as they claim? I think that what we've seen from what I would describe as right-wing elements within the Labour Party, and many of those elements habitate around Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner, are people who are, in my opinion, abusing anti-Semitism for very narrow political ends. And that very narrow political end is to rid the party of its left wing, to take co total control of the Labour Party and its agenda. The Labour Party of Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner goes back to an elite Labour Party where the party is just a vehicle to achieve power. Mm -hmm. It's simply about power. So that sort of part of the Labour Party, some of whom are Jewish, um, I think have actually been quite despicable in the way they've dealt with progressive Jews within the party. I mean, self-hating, which uh, I have three degrees in clinical yeah. psychology, so I find it particularly absurd, this notion of self-hating, and it's specifically a certain type of Jew who is self-hating. And it's a way of, you know, not actually engaging with the debate and the issues, because unfortunately, the way in which they engage with anti-Semitism isn't really about racism. You're either an anti-racist or you're not. You can't pick and choose mm -hmm. which racisms offend you and which don't. And so the focus on anti-Semitism has also led to this focus on left-wing Jews. And for me, the irony is that you get the sense that almost the majority of people being suspended by the Labour Party around anti-Semitism are probably Jewish which at so many levels is absurd, and especially when you consider that they're probably anti-racist Jews because they're of the left. Now, I had the experience on social media when I first mentioned, because I sort of weighed in in support of Jeremy Corbyn, and then when I was attacked for it as a Jew, I weighed in with some of my personal history about the fact that my mother was a Holocaust survivor who survived the war in Vienna, living hidden in a cellar for three and a half years. I had two rabbis, one in Reading and one in Washington, D.C., on social media, suggest that my mother, the survivor who lost 39 members of her family, must have been a kappa, must have been complicit with the Nazis. Now, you know, the sort of nonsense of self-hating Jew and this sort of pop psychology that shows, if anything, it shows the lack of intellect of the people using the phrase is one thing. But to start calling somebody's late parent a Nazi collaborator because that person is actually in favor of a progressive anti-establishment politician, I think shows a level of depravity that is quite disconcerting. I think that Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner's absolute refusal to criticize this abuse of progressive Jews within the Labour Party and actually to target a lot of those progressive Jews shows that they are friends only with a segment of the Jewish community. And this is another problem with the entire debate. This notion that the Jewish community is one homogenous community. 
I mean, that in itself is offensive. The Jewish community is as varied as any other community, and it's varied politically, personally, religiously, in every possible respect. So I think that Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner are friends of a very small grouping within the Jewish community in the United Kingdom. And they're actually, they've set themselves up, I think intentionally, as the enemies of progressive Jews. And I personally, and as a Jew, find that deeply offensive. What do you think is the motivation behind Keir Starmer's actions? Do you think it's more a kind of ideology, a kind of reminiscence for the old Blair years, or do you think it's more just kind of personal ambition? I think what it's about is Keir Starmer and his advisers, who I have to say so far since he's been in office, have proven themselves to be remarkably politically inept. You know, it was people who are supportive of Keir Starmer who were very critical of Jeremy Corbyn not being 20 percentage points ahead of the Tories in um, opinion polls. I mean, Keir Starmer would give his right leg to be ahead of the Tories at all, most of the time. So I think there's a degree of political ineptness. And I think what they have sort of stumbled across, mainly because of their lack of political imagination or vision, is that he has to have this sort of Tony Blair-like moment when Tony Blair distanced new Labour from its very close relationship with the trade unions. And, as I say, for quite worrying reasons, I think Starmer and his advisers have alighted on this issue of anti-Semitism as his sort of moment, his Tony Blair moment, at which he was going to show himself to be a new type of Labour leader, that the party is, in their words, under new management. And I think it is remarkably unimaginative. I think there is no ideological or political basis to it. I think he doesn't have ideology. I really worry about the fact that he seems so bereft of politics generally. We've seen a massive increase in anti-Semitism, in Islamophobia, obviously in anti-black racism, with the rise to power of politicians like Donald Trump, like Boris Johnson, who himself wrote a novel that is replete with anti-Semitic tropes. But goodness me, Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner have no interest in that. They have no interest in Islamophobia, either in the Tory party or in the Labour party, their own party. So it's a really manipulative use of anti-Semitism that undermines the very real fight against anti-Semitism, Islamophobia and anti-black racism. I've seen a few people in the Labour party, on the Labour right, talk about as if racism in the Labour party is something which only started under Jeremy Corbyn. But I'm old enough to remember Jack Straw, David Blunkett, talk about bogus asylum seekers or the whole kind of war on terror, the war in Iraq. Islamophobia is whipped up and whipped up. Yeah, at the moment, I'm not seeing anyone talk about Islamophobia within the party, you know, except on the fringes of the left. There seems to be no kind of compassion for the problems that Muslim Labour members are happening. Do you think that's a case that Keir Starmer doesn't care about Muslims or just doesn't have any kind of compassion to the issues that they face? I think that it reflects the way in which anti-Semitism in specific is being weaponized by the leadership of the Labour Party. Because the reality is that being a victim of racism is not and should not be a competition. Nobody wants to be the person or the group facing the most racism. So those of us who are anti-racists have a responsibility to oppose all racism in the same way. It doesn't matter whether it's anti-Semitic, whether it's Islamophobic, whether it's directed at somebody because of the colour of their skin, their sexual or gender orientation, where they come from. Any form of discrimination against another human being is fundamentally wrong. Mm -hmm. And I feel that very strongly in my own life having at a very young age experienced anti-Semitism in South Africa, which, let's remember, apartheid South Africa was run by a group of neo-Nazis. And the Jewish community in South Africa 
was from the far left, the leader, the commander-in-chief of the, of the armed struggle against apartheid, was a white Jew. But so too was the prosecutor who sought the death penalty against Nelson Mandela. But in the South African context, every single type of discrimination was wrong. And the apartheid regime tried to make out as though we should discriminate against people depending on how dark their skin was. I mean, just think of the psychopathy that that actually speaks to. So this notion that we should focus on anti-Semitism rather than any other form of racism is wrong. Not because anti-Semitism shouldn't be fought against with everything we have, but because it shouldn't be fought against at the expense of everything else. And what has astonished me is the people who have been most vocal about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party have been absolutely silent on Islamophobia or any other forms of racism. And I think that that is profoundly wrong. You are either anti-racist, anti-all racism, or you are part of the racism problem in this world. The response to the anti-politics of Trump and Boris Johnson and others is to be on the side of everybody they offend of everybody who is worse off because of them, because that is the vast majority of people. And surely that's the way to win power. But you don't get the sense that Starmer and Rayner's Labour Party would think in that sort of way at all.